Eyes on Longmont, offering a diversity of topics about our community that will inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Eyes on Longmont. I was born in Buffalo, New York, and um, that's where I started to draw and paint, and I think a lot had to do with the winters. I would stay in a lot and just paint and draw. And then in high school, I took a darkroom class, and it excited me a lot, so I started to create my own images in the darkroom. Although I had a camera first when I was eight or nine years old. and. Um, when I went to college, I went to FIT in New York and I studied interior design and got a degree in design. And I worked for about 20 years in an architectural office as an interior design, architectural designer and project manager. And while I worked full time, I also had a darkroom in my home, in my apartment, and I would make jewelry or do my darkroom work uh, as relaxation. And um, I started showing my work probably in, uh, I would say the 80s. I would show in different venues in New York. And then um, in 1990, I was full time into photography. And what I would do is have my work in galleries. I did um, portraiture. I shot models and babies and families and mostly black and white. Many times I would hand color the portraits that I did. I also did home portraits for people out on, in South Hamptons where I would shoot with infrared and actually do a painting of their home. Um, then I was also creating jewelry and selling to crystal healing shops in Manhattan. And then 9-11 came and my husband was down at ground zero and things in New York changed drastically. So he lost his job. He worked on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange and he was a member of the New York Stock Exchange. And um, so when he could no longer work, I needed an income and gallery work was not going to do it so I opened a gallery with a friend of mine in Manhattan and we ran that for two years and eventually my husband and I sold our house on Long Island and we got in the car and drove for a year and ended up in Tucson and during that year I saw a lot of things happening around the country which really upset me and mainly regarding trees because I photographed trees for many years and I love trees and when I saw what was happening to them I felt that I needed to do something and when I settled in Tucson, Arizona I decided the thing that I needed to do was to write a book and we'll talk about that afterwards um, in another segment but um, I spent a lot of time putting together my photographs to create this book and in Tucson, I also showed my work a lot and um, I was in a collective with six other artists and um, every summer, it was so hot, we would come to Boulder to see our kids and our grandchildren. And so eventually, 
after seven years of being in Tucson, we decided, well, why don't we just move to Boulder? So two years ago, that's what we did. We moved to Boulder, and so this is all kind of new to me. And right now, I am showing my work in various small venues and looking for another place to present my work. And mainly, my book is what I've been spending time marketing. Basically, I started as a painter and an artist when I was very young. And when I went to high school, I learned how to print in the dark room, black and white photography. And after that, I pretty much fell in love with photography and there was kind of no going back, I thought. But then I found infrared film. And infrared, which all of these images are, it's a black and white film that sees a different wavelength. And what it does is it turns the sky dark but it turns anything that's green to a white. So that when you're hand coloring something, you can actually take anything that was green and paint it as if it's any season you want it. So I've done versions of this barn in springtime, fall, summer, and it's just a matter of changing the foliage on the trees and and on the barn. So that is how I was hand coloring on prints that I printed on in the dark room. And then I took it a step further and I started to paint with a thicker paint. And I actually put more detail into shadow spaces with colored pencils and I used acrylic paint to cover certain elements of the picture heavier. And I've done many of those types of paintings on prints that I did in the dark room. And all the while I still did my black and white, which you'll see a lot of black and white here in the studio. Still shooting black and white film and doing the printing in my dark room, I created this piece with three separate negatives. One was the beach, one was a cemetery, and one was a sky. And I took paints after I printed this image and I painted over the black and white photograph. So I did a lot of black and white plus painting on black and white. And here's another piece that I've painted on black and white print. And this one is not infrared. It's a regular black and white fiber base print and I painted on it. So from there, eventually, I started getting into doing digital. But what I did was, because I loved having infrared film as my basis to the image, I would drum scan the infrared and then once it was in the computer I would take it into Photoshop and hand color it there and that way I didn't have to do each one individually I could actually do it once and then make prints and this happens to be a print on a watercolor paper and um, this was from Brooklyn Botanical Gardens and I don't know if you're seeing but a lot of my images are of trees and I've always I've always loved trees and nature and eventually it's what drove me to write my environmental book on trees. You'll see all of these images around me were black and whites. This one happens to be like that one scanned and then colored in the computer. This is a regular black and white photograph. And these are just black and white photographs. And then this is also a black and white photograph and it's one of my pieces that I'm most proud of because I've won a number of awards and it was written up in the New York Times. And I call it Dog on Beach and I shot it in Malibu. 
And it was one of those things where I was just sitting on someone's back deck facing the beach and had my camera ready. And when one dog was running to the other, I just decided the right moment. And with the shadows, it all just worked perfectly. And then um, these are some more black and whites. This series of three tree images is actually a pretty interesting study. And the one in the middle was a black and white. The one on the right was actually color film. These were all two and a quarter film. And what I did was I used the color image to select colors for the black and white. I hand colored on the computer because again, I digitally scanned these images and both the one on the left and the one in the middle were colored by hand in the computer in Photoshop to match the color tones of the color piece that's on the right. And then I printed them on watercolor paper and I would hand tear the edges so that you'd get a nice decal effect. And that's how I created those. And the one in the middle actually is the tree that I used for my tree book. But what I did here was I removed the background and I added the planet behind the tree. These two pieces here on the top were both shot with black and white infrared film in Central Park. And again, these are images that I had drum scanned and then brought them into the computer and hand colored them in Photoshop. Now these were done with watercolor paper. So on this particular image, I even added some pencil to it after the print. And I, I find I do that a lot. I'll add and embellish to the prints. These prints are all simple digital images. And this last print on the end also is printed on watercolor paper, was a black and white two and a quarter print uh, negative, and um, it was drum scanned, and I colored it in Photoshop. As I progressed from painting to photography to painting on black and white prints, eventually with the digital images, I decided that I wanted to paint right on the photographs. And so what I did is I would take a digital image, whether it was from a digital camera or if I drum scanned the negative, um, I would then print on canvas and paint over the canvas. So this series are all, the whole series was done on canvas and with acrylic paint over the images. Uh, before I printed these, I would do some filters in Photoshop and some a little bit of painting in Photoshop to get the process started. And then I would take acrylic paint, and it's a thick acrylic paint, and I would paint right over the image. And just to give you an example, this is a plain photograph of what the piece on the top started out as. This is a cristata, or a crested saguaro. And what I did, you'll notice there weren't as many flowers, although I was thrilled to find flowers to begin with on this one. Um, I added some flowers in Photoshop. So I first worked some things in Photoshop and then printed it and painted over the image. But that gives you an idea of the difference from what I shot to what the final product was. And then I also do the same type of thing on watercolor paper. I'll take pastel, because with watercolor paper, you wouldn't want to put uh, acrylic. So you can take colored pencils or pastels and color, add color to the watercolor. This is an example of the watercolor paper. And I printed 
this image, which started out as film. I had a drum scanned. It was printed onto watercolor paper. And I found that I needed to add some things and cover some things. So I took pastels and color pencils and I worked over this image. And I don't know if you can tell, but these are apples at the end of apple season. <laughs> I also do portraiture, and way back when I lived in New York, I did a lot of black and white portraits. I did babies and families, and now I'm trying to branch out and do something a little differently. So, for instance, I do work where I'll photograph the person against a white background, and then just add something digitally, or an example like this where I took this yoga instructor and changed her mat into a heart. And that was done digitally. And here's a, an example where I was photographing someone and just picked up a flower, put it in front of her face and photographed her that way. And then these are images of Nalani who is a bass player here in Boulder. And we went outside and on Pearl Street and we photographed. And then what I decided I'd like to do is actually more creative type of portraiture. So I started with myself and I would take an image of myself and just add another image to it. Kind of what they used to say is sandwiching with slides, but now in digital, it's just applying one over the other as a layer. And then I did this image with peacock feathers, but it's a little bit more intricate because what I actually did was I took my eye and I put it into the middle of the peacock feather and repeated it as if it were a peacock feather. And then I took pieces of peacock feathers and built it around my face. And here's another one of myself where I just put myself into the forest because I just did my tree book and I wanted to have something with myself mixed in with the trees. And 